so cool. Hey, what up, though? Minivan musician, kind of long overdue, talking about a place we went and something we experienced. Not sure why we're coming out all blurry and shit, but uh, mm-hmm. I think it's a candlelight does that. Oh, um, but yeah, so we may as well get into what we're talking about now. It's not an interview today. It's just us talking about um, we went to a Trump rally, sort of. Yeah. In, uh, Asheville <laughs> recently, which is not far from where we live now. And um, I guess the first thing is, well, what did you expect from it? Just going into it. Uh, well, I found out he was even going to be here um, like two days beforehand. Uh, I just heard a thing on the news when I was picking my daughter up. And I'm like, oh, cool, he's going to be here speaking. Like, it was just a speaking thing um, in an auditorium. And you could reserve tickets, uh, but it was first come, first serve. So they had, like, 2,500 seats or whatever. So you reserve tickets. We did that. I thought that it was going to be, you know, we get there, we probably wait in the long line, go through security, da 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 and then get in to the building and sit and wait until he speaks. (laughs) Yeah. There was like, how many people do you think? If I had to guess and I I almost did some nerdy shit and, you know, I'll be showing little clips of, you know, sped up. Obviously I filmed the entire walk and, you know, it was a 13 minute walk or something like that. Walking at a pretty decent, like, yeah three mile an hour clip type of thing. So it, it, it was a pretty, I would guess 50,000 people. There was uh, something was crazy like that. 30,000. Like it was unbelievable. Cause they, they ended up letting 3000 people into the building. Um, but in order to have done that, you would have had to get there at like 9 AM yeah. and wait all day. Um, and doors didn't even open till 1 p.m. And Trump didn't even speak until like 3.30 or 4. Yeah, so that's, so that's a whole ass day when you got kids with you and stuff like that. Yeah, we took the kids, so which was a cool experience for them. They had a great time. So it was bigger as far as turnout <laughs> than you expected. Way bigger. And I mean, Way going bigger. to see him speak, it's like you hear Trump rally, which I, I hate yeah, the word rally being used. Because but they make, it, they make us sound shitty. It just... And then because it's, it's topical, it, it was kind of like, okay, well, it's going to be about the economy. Yes. So I wasn't thinking of it as like a rally. No, it was a speaking engagement. Yeah, and I, I think in... For the campaign. I, I'm, I'm always thinking in like civilized society ways. Like, uh, oh, so there's someone who's led the free world before who knows some things and is running for office talking about uh, something we're all dealing with. So that's what this is mm-hmm. and it's like nope it's a trump rally it's it's like so like one-sided yeah. if, if i was in town there and i was in the middle or i was on the other side i would go out of curiosity yeah but i care about these things so it's like you know i know i understand some people aren't like laser focused on it but and i mean as far as what i expected from it i'll admit that the people were a little different than i expected and that's coming from somebody from within, quote unquote, MAGA, meaning. You mean like our people? Yeah. 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 Like I, I, I thought that people would be like a little wilder, a little, I don't know. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what the word is that I'm looking for, but just yeah, maybe a little like louder. Rowdy. Yeah. Kind of rowdy, you know, and I, and I hate to say it, but maybe I've been brainwashed to think that way. All right. Um, and to be honest, I, I thought you'd see some of what the left stereotypes as like the 
dumb, quote unquote, redneck, you know, Trump supporter, whatever, far right, all that mm-hmm. stuff. And I just didn't. No. Like, I didn't see it at all. It was like, a very large mix of people. Yeah, it was. Know, a lot of different kinds of people, different ages, different races, different, you know, and looks. Just, just Virtually different. no one was dumb. No, I yeah. mean, you walk by I didn't people. Speak to anyone that was stupid. No, and and and, and you notice, uh, you know, even even if you're not talking to somebody directly, you walk by, you're hearing conversations, and people are not just talking about issues, but they're like referencing executive orders, and they're they're talking about this thing happening overseas and that thing. Yeah, and, some stuff. I'm it, like, man, I didn't even know that. Yeah, you know? And, and I was I was pretty damned impressed that like the average. Uh, Trump supporter that that I saw in that unbelievably long line and then the time afterwards you know everybody stayed in the street after he was in there even though you couldn't hear him speaking from outside we got up and once we heard that they were closing the doors that they weren't letting anyone else in this is going to sound pathetic but I was devastated because I she really, 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 really <laughs> wanted to be in the building. I wanted the kids to be in there, you know, and to get to experience seeing, you know, the president. Because, yes, he was the president. And he's, he's about to be again. Yeah, he's going. You know, speak. Um, I've never been able to do anything like that in my lifetime, you know, before. Never been in a, the same room or place with a president ever. So I wanted them to be able to, you know, experience that. But we did get up as close as we possibly could to the building. And everybody did, really. You know, I mean, everybody that couldn't get in all stood and stayed outside. And, you know, we couldn't even, they didn't even play it on the speakers or anything. But we all stood and hung out anyway and talked amongst ourselves or watched it live on our phones or you know, yeah, there's some like, USA chants. Yeah. There was cool little pockets of people. Like you said, there's different types of people. There was like these, um, I forgot what the name of their group was called, but it was like these Korean people. Yeah. They had like flags. It wasn't just a Korean flag, but it was like they had like an organization. Yeah, yeah. They were there. And it's like uh, everybody there was not just friendly, but they were all about making sure your kids were catered to. Like yeah, everyone was super nice to the kids. Yeah, like it, it was like it seriously felt like some sort of like family gathering or something. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And like you said, it was that the age ranges were so different. Everybody had like this, you know, uh, values in common. You know, and you would even hear people talking about like you. You would hear people that are like, and I talked to some were you know. One is a little more Christian, one is a little less, but they're able to find common ground on certain values. And it's like they don't get hung up on the religious part of it or on the foreign relation part of it. It's like they found common ground no matter what. Like that was kind of like the theme I noticed. Yeah. You know, and I was like proud of that. I was proud of the fact that like we took our kids somewhere where, you know, we're, we're part of a group of people that's like, kind of pretty much hated hated yeah and depending on how history is written right in in the public eye you know so and what they saw was i mean probably like the most positive upbeat group of human beings i've ever seen even Mm -hmm. like a sporting event anything like that's kind of what it reminded me of but it felt more harmonious than that there was no violence oh god no no not even close there was no violence there was nobody fighting there was a couple you know you know yelling back and forth at each other a few times you know i even did it once but nothing you know over the top um and there was yeah there was no fighting at all no there there was none of that there there was like nobody intoxicated not you know, know nobody this. using profanity except we'll get to it in a minute. People coming from the other side. Um, there, there was none of that. You know, none, none of that stuff that, that they'd have people believe. And uh, I was kind of impressed with it. I was like, okay, this is my, you know, the this is my party. This is my community. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody cared about the same things, and it, and, it, and it felt great. There was like a lot of harmony out there. Yeah. But the the thing that we got to talk about is what we experienced with the left. Um, (laughs) Okay. First off, 
There weren't that many. In no, there, frankly, that, that was, very was, small amount. Yeah, very small. It was kind of wack, you guys. Like if the, if there's a, yeah, if you, I'm starting to believe that nobody. We're so big and cares bad, on that you side. Come and show up to you know. Our guy is so evil. Ruin He's such our, a criminal and whatnot. Our Trump party. Yeah. Then, uh, <laughs> then you better, uh, you know, bring a, a little bit more because there was. Well, the one thing I noticed was, and you agreed with me, is like, okay, up there near the front, you had like that group of protesters that were like, they, in they that put one area. Yeah, they put themselves behind like metal gates and stuff. Yeah. And it, it, it's hilarious. They were behind a gate. There was definitely there was a gate. That like, uh, that like the police I think had made just to have help people walk through that area. Yeah, it was almost like when you um, walk like to a, a ride at Cedar Point. Yeah, there, so they you know. put that there for that purpose, and then there was another gate um, beyond that, and they were like back there and like on the other side, like they could have been like walking the around with people, and... but they were back. There, like nobody put them back there. It's like they have they, like big picket sign things, and yeah. like they're like far enough away to where you can't even really read what the sign says. But every now and then they yell out some like horrible stuff. Yeah. But what I noticed that that's what I was gonna say. I noticed that okay, so say you had a dozen of them over there, they weren't even unified with each other. No, like this guy is like about abortions, I guess. And like this guy is about Trump uh, with the stupid Epstein sign, which is like oh, that that's total made, projection that coming from them. Sick. I did <laughs> yell at that guy. I can't lie. Oh yeah, yeah, he was. I did yell at that guy because it was complete pushing BS. False yeah, it was horror. I'm not even gonna say what the sign said, but then, no. um, then there was of course the like criminal thing. Oh yeah. But all of them yelling. were yelling their thing. But, like, trying to yell over top of each other, like, you know, and of course there was, uh, I heard one that was, like, the Palestine thing, you know, so it's oh, like. Oh, I didn't hear any Yeah, of and then there was, like, yeah. something to do with gay or something, like, but they were all, like, separate from each other, like, literally, purposely, like, 10 yards from each other, and, like, trying to yell over each other what their, like, issue was as being more important than their yeah. so-called partner in arms or whatever. And their issue like, <laughs> wasn't even anything. I mean, the, the one guy just kept screaming, lock him up. Lock yeah, him. yeah. We are all like, for what? <laughs> and he would say something like, anything. Yeah, or, you know, all of it. Like, all of it. All of it. And that was, that's that's the whole thing. Like, I, I decided to go out, and I have a little bit of footage of it that I'll put in here, but my phone kept running out of memory. And I'm pissed about it because I got, I'm not going to say good footage, but interesting footage. I decided to go into the belly of the beast. Like I went right. There's like kind of a little park in the middle there where like the, the, the obvious misfits were out there with their different signs and stuff. Those and were the ones that were like actually kind of in the middle of the crowd more. At least, yeah. You know? Yeah. They were trying to make some sort of statement. Yeah. So, like, I went over there and tried to talk to them. And before we went, and on the way there, I said, I am going to find some people on the left who have, like, a good argument. And it sounds so dumb saying out loud now after what I experienced. Because I was like, okay, there's going to be somebody who's educated who's going to be able to cite uh, a whole bunch of parallels between Trump and, and, and this movement and something from decades or centuries past, or they're going to be able to mention this law or that executive order, you know, what they picture is, is going to happen if he's elected that's bad for the country, just anything. Okay, so now I'm hunting liberals in an objective way, not in, a, uh, not in a way that they would want to take that. I just want to find them, and I'll tell them they can say whatever they want about Trump. I don't care. I'll put it out there for them. Um, but... Uh, I want them to tell me just like the one good thing that makes them support who they're supporting. And uh, we'll see what they have to say. This, this ought to get interesting if I find it. They like to do drive by insults and vulgarity, but I haven't seen any that are willing to have a, a conversation. Something intelligent, something with a point. And my God, people, I swear to you, I tried everybody. And either I, I literally had a guy that was just like, I, I, I was extremely friendly. The way I was approaching people is like, 
hey, excuse me, like, I, I would really just like to ask you, like, uh, one policy that you support with, with your candidate. Um, you can say whatever you want about Trump. I, I just want to get, you know, uh, one for people that are on the fence or, you know, who don't understand the issues. Yeah, we just want to know what your thoughts and opinions are. I was super friendly to people. And I would get, like, it's crazy how angry and, and, and disrespectful the old people are that are on the left. Yeah, and like, all you have to be doing is wearing a, a MAGA hat. Yeah, and I mean, the, the one dude was like, fuck you, and like, you know, it, it, of course he was real careful about the distance between us when he did that, but I'm just saying, like, that was after my friendly greeting, and there was another guy that I had talked to who was a veteran who was 84 years old, who his big thing, his big thing was billionaires start war and he kept doing this and I'm like, okay, no, 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 I, I'm with you. I, I, I see the greed thing behind war. I was like, to be honest with you, you know, I'm from a place in Michigan where our economic boom low key came from a war from manufacturing weapons and, and, and bullets. And, you know, I said, I, I understand all that. Uh, and I said, but, but, but can't you acknowledge that at least judging on Trump's four years in office and Biden's four years in office that like there wasn't a war under Trump? Yeah. Do you think that's a coincidence? And he had this big smirk and he'd shake his head at me like at first he's a veteran. Then he's a psychologist and, and he's basically diagnosed me as being angry. And he's like, you got to change, man. And I'm like change what dude like uh, I'm, I'm asking you a question man like you have an opinion i want to hear right, it you don't need to it's fine me. you I'm know just asking you a question. and it, it it turns into this whole thing where i'm like okay you know i i can respect the fact that and and he never even said trump specifically but obviously he was there you know picketing yeah. trumps or, or whatever so you know i, I said okay I, you know I, I get it trump's a billionaire that that's your right to kind of think that billionaires start wars and stuff like that or hundred millionaires, whatever. And I said, but you know what? I want to thank you for your service. Like, you know, the, before we part ways and he was like, Oh no. And I'm like, excuse me. He's like, uh, you got to change, man. I was like, you're not going to shake my hand. And he's like, no, no, I'm not. You got to change. But that same weird, crazy smile. Then there's the kid that I'll have some footage of here that I talked to where it's like, What's your issue? And the ones who would jump up and be like, I got an issue. It wouldn't be an issue. Yeah. It would be like free lunch. And then, you know, you would go down the whole thing where you're like, well, listen, like, you know, uh, like say in our County, like that, that was, that's voted on, you know, state to state, uh, yeah, community to community. It's on a year. smaller level, uh, local government. I mean, and uh, I explained to him that like, we're in a very conservative County and, we have it for everybody, mm -hmm. you know? And he's like, Oh yeah, I just, you know? And so that point would be gone. And I'd be like, you know, is there anything else? And it'd be like, well, I think that, yeah, yeah, yeah that's what it is. Uh, 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 Trump, when he ran uh, companies, a bunch of his contractors didn't get paid. Oh yeah. That was a couple of people. Said that. And I was like, okay, well, that, that might be true. And I was like, but I said, I would be careful, though, uh, because like when people are really successful, it's like you're, you're always going to have people say that they, they got screwed by this person or whatever. Meanwhile, they're like 15 rungs down, right. meaning like Trump didn't even know that this subcontractor of a subcontractor of a subcontractor didn't get paid by their contractor. You know, and I said, but hey, I, I'm not even saying you're wrong. I said, you know, honestly, when people are like really successful on that level, Usually there is some kind of fuckery at times, you know what I'm saying? And, it, you know, it is what it is. It's all in the game. And I said, so I'm not even saying that, that you're incorrect. And I said, you know, but do me a favor. And when you go home, since it's so, you know, appropriate these days to hate on Trump and to dig up dirt on him and stuff like that, obviously it's been going on for eight years now. Um, Google, you know, use Google, the, the the, you know, the left search engine yeah. and look up uh, testimonies, not not literal testimonies, but people on YouTube or wherever saying uh, that they got screwed over by Trump, you know, working for him. And then also search how many were delighted to work for him. Mm -hmm. 
and also take a look at how most of the people who he fired in real life or fired as part of a TV show later worked for him and stuff like that. I was like, I'm not really sure. And then right then we had met a guy who was super cool from the area who had uh, basically worked uh, oh. Trump's uh yeah, his grandkids. His grandkids' birthday, birthday Mar-a-Lago. recently at Mar-a-Lago. I, I thought he was Kenny the Clown. I'll give you a shout out. Yeah, yeah. like I, he said that he worked. For, I thought he was. Making she thought it up. you were a lying you know? bastard. Well, because I just, he, just, I assumed. Yeah, he's probably making mm-hmm. that up. He pulled pictures out right away. Yeah, you know? yeah, he did. Yeah, and he makes uh, balloon animals. He can make. Basically anything out of he the made he Donald made balloon Trump trumps. balloon animals. <laughs> They're yeah. balloons. <laughs> like he yeah. was, and you know, it, uh, he walked over right at that time, and I said, "He has a picture of Trump and Eric, and I think there's like the kids." At the and, and he's very big on not being political. Yeah, he was like what I said at the beginning that even if I was in the middle or on the left, I would have been there just to see what people were talking about and to know what's going on in yeah. my country, essentially. Yeah. And he was kind of like that. Like he, he stayed in the middle and stuff like that. And he just gave his own testimony of, no, I was I was taken care of. Very nice guy. He went yeah. on and on about how great we the kids were. The and, kids, and the grandkid yeah. had a cool how story well about. They were, yeah, the granddaughter. They, wanna, uh, they weren't greedy. Right. The, the granddaughter gave the kid her balloon that she yeah. waited all that time for because yeah. that kid didn't have one or something. Something. Yeah. You know, and that the kids were just like, yes, sir, you know, like just really great kids, great family, super nice. Like he, he's worked for him a couple times, you know, and so like he came over right at that time and I said, see, here's another example. And then I named a couple of speakers like Dave Rubin and stuff like that who worked because they brought up supposedly Trump um, or his administration or whatever uh, with this event like refused to pay in advance for the venue or something. What? And that was, a, yeah, yeah, that was brought up to me by the same people that, like, I kept asking them for policy, policy, policy. And, like, all <laughs> they, they would do is, means. like, well, Trump didn't want to pay for the venue today. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And they're like, yeah, it's always paid in advance. And I, I heard from somebody later that when it comes to, like, a uh, political, uh, you know, like yeah. a, a, anything like that, um, that doesn't really apply. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's like, I, I don't know. I, I don't know the rules of the venue. I, I'm not sure. I don't know if any of that was true. I think it's like you're hosting them as a, a guest when it comes to that. So I don't know how all that works. We it's had big deal. the only other. Uh, and then I had another kid that just babbled on for several minutes with God knows what. Like, seriously, I, I, I'm i telling you and she can attest to this. I was really, really, really trying to see these people's points, their viewpoint, what they thought was important how they thought they wouldn't get that from Trump. If possibly I could show them they would, they really had no type of, uh, you know, Oh, and the other thing was like, um, you know, Trump is supposedly for the Christians and, you know, how can he have cheated on his wife in the past and done this thing and that thing and be a real Christian. And And he is going to do the thing of no adultery and he's going to, perpetrate Christianity and try and bring its values to all of us, right. then what value, what pedestal does he stand on to commit all of those acts himself and then try and tell us how to act? And then, of course, this is, you know, an atheist person yeah. is, you know, and me being a Christian, it's like I had to explain well, to him the whole thing that we are sinners. Yeah, sinners, that's kind of how it works. You know, you know, and even hit like even them, like when you're going, when you're when you're coming to them and saying like, OK, my hands are behind my back, you know, like you're, you're coming to them and you're saying like, OK, we're on yeah, equal white ground the white flag. Hat, and, and you come to them and uh, the kid led with the fact that he was the tight like. He figured that I was, since I'm a conservative, that I'm Christian. I was like, well, yeah, you're right about that. And he's like, well, see, um, I'm not, or I'm going to go to hell because of how I live. As far as you're probably concerned. So my opinion probably doesn't matter. And I'm like, no, that's not true. And I don't think you're going to hell. And uh, what I'm saying is I'm setting this up to show how he set this up. Even when you're talking to them like that, waving that white flag or whatever, meeting them in the middle, letting them do all the talking, let them guide everything. And just having like unbelievable patience, 
you find out at the end of it, you're being manipulated the whole time. I mean, and at the beginning, he played this whole, like, I'm going to go to hell and this and that. And throughout it, we talked about Christianity and he listened to me and all this kind of thing. And it seemed like we're on the same page. And at the end, when we're parting ways, I said, hey, another thing is don't think that you're just that you're going to burn in hell. Like you said, I said, you know, that, that that's not necessarily true. You know, blah, blah, blah. Um, and he said, oh, no, no, I, I know I'm not going to hell. And I was like, what are you talking about? And he's like, no, I just said that because I figured you walking over to me, you were probably a Christian and I just wanted us to be on equal ground. And I was like, you wanted us to be on equal ground by lying? So lied right I was like, that, that's how you start a conversation? That's your party. You know, and, and that's the thing. Like, I, I was sitting here, uh, like, going out of my way to tell this kid. I wasn't saying, like, oh, you can change, you can repent. I didn't say none no, of those words. Just, like, I, I don't think you're I said, and, and what I said to him is, I said, you said that you're, you're going to go to hell. I said, well, that that tells me that, you know, you believe in heaven Something, and hell or you, right? you, you believe in some higher power. And that's when he said, no, yeah, I just said that so that, you know, we had been. I'm just like, well, why would you want to be on equal ground so he could lie to you? Because he wanted camera time, you know? I guess. Yeah. He wanted to be the one that would talk. Then there was a heavy set guy that would just be like, F you. And then there was the girl that snickers. Oh, yeah. You know, like snicker, like the snicker at the term human trafficking, which brings me to <laughs> the first lady that actually talked. She said she had 10, 10 things, 10 policies that she was going to give us. And the first one, you kind of had to run her off, basically. Well, uh, so you're I'm, all blurry. You got to get in some light over here or something. <laughs> I'm not, uh, especially not on that day. I, I'm, I'm at the end of my rope. Okay. Um. <laughs> when it comes to all of this. Um, so We're about to win, so you don't know. I, I have become, you know, a lot less uh, patient and um, more vocal, and I don't care who it applies to. You know, my, my family and I are on completely different sides of the spectrum politically. Um, I'm the oddball out, which I'm used to, but, you know, I'm the right one this time, literally and figuratively. Uh, but mm -hmm. I can only hear so many things or so much without saying something. I didn't so plan, much stupidity. I didn't plan on walking <laughs> over there um, to say anything. I just went over there because there were these people that were standing there in these, like, ski masks and stuff. Too. Oh, yeah, yeah, And I was that, like, I want to see what they're about because they're kind of, like, creepy looking. Like, what's their deal, you know? And that lady, well, I don't even, you asked her what? Well, no, she said she had 10 policies. And she oh. said, I can name 10 right now. And she was all about it. But then she didn't want to be I think, yeah, I have right? her. She, she'll be in here. She'll be at the end of the video. Yeah. Um, and, uh. We asked her, or I asked her for the first one, and she said that her party, and see, this is what I mean. It's never a policy. It's never even um, an idea that someone pitched. No. Meaning, like, Kamala came up with an idea that she should get with so-and-so in Philadelphia to do this thing. No, it's never that. It's, I believe that, or my party cares about the inner city kids. Yeah, she said, my party cares about children. Now, I happened to be wearing my... Um stop human trafficking shirt god's children are not for sale um and i'm like oh your party cares about children huh you know do explain uh and what did she and i said you know i said, said, said what she's yeah. referring to is the fact that with the open border there's like hundreds yeah, there's of thousands of kids that are getting trafficked because of that, that are lost. and i said that's part of her main issue with this whole thing and I said, and she said, she goes, oh, no, no, of course that, you know, I'm like, oh, okay, of course that, you know. And then she went on to babble about, she said, they, she cared, they cared about she said, but kids. I'm talking about the inner city kids. That's who matters. And I'm like, and you said, but I what about like, these kids? And oh, she goes, so I don't care about those kids. Or yeah. I was like, like, oh, so F these kids. Right. And it just. She said something, and I'm just like. She said, know, "I don't care about those kids. It's like, about the inner city of, kids." Yeah, not those kids. I'm like, okay, so not. And she what, said it like they were just like trash, like not those kids. Yeah, I'm like the inner city you, kids. Uh, what you said 
You know what that is? I'll sense. say it because that's uh, virtue signaling. It's, it's virtue sing signaling and on like a crazy level because like when she's saying inner city kids, she's saying black kids. Exactly. Okay. And uh, if you're going the minority angle, okay, so like all those kids that we're talking about coming across the border getting trapped. Yeah, they're obviously are not white. People of color. Yeah. And yet they're not inner city in her mind, black kids. And I always say, I'm not putting thoughts in someone's heads or words in someone's mouth. I am with her. Yeah. Because I can't, I can't possibly fathom anything else she meant by that. I mean, if she were to say our kids, meaning like American kids, you know what I'm saying? But in her mind, those are already American kids because they walked in here. They're I'm American. Just thinking like, so, <laughs> okay, you know, kids. You, you'll hear a, the tone when I put it in. Term. Here. Kids in general, like whether they're inner city or freaking whatever, I don't care. Whatever type of yeah, kid it was they the are, inner city spec specification. It was weird to me that yeah. it felt like she's talking about a particular race. Of course she was. That's and like, just yeah. whatever type of kid they are. If they're being trafficked or being lost in in the system or whatever, and, and you know coming over here, obviously your party does not give a shit, and it's like, oh no, not those kids. Where do those kids usually end up? I'm like, not. They're in the inner city usually, right? Sometimes, yeah, yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like that lady could have just been like, oh kids. I you just know? I stopped talking and I I was like, none of what you just said makes any sense. Like, and this is exactly why I don't do this shit. And I walked away. And the other guys you'll see that she was talking about at the end of this with the ski mask on, as I was like, well, what's a policy on the left that you guys support? They're like, none of them. And so what they were basically is anti political period like yeah, they were anarchists yeah, like literally they, they were actually government. yeah so like in other words they probably show up at the harris to, well they probably don't because there's not like a big They're mass decent. group of people there that they need to to make a statement to you know yeah. like they could go do that to a wall somewhere or something but yeah like and i mean it where i'll put another thing in here too that doesn't show much but it's just me uh dealing with there there was a whole group of women who were like kind of smiling, kind of nodded at me and, and, and waved high, even though I had the MAGA hat on. And I said, hey, you know, excuse me, can, can I just ask you guys to just give one policy that you guys support so that that way on this day, your candidate also has a say? And they got so pissed off and like speed walked away and talked trash like as they're walking away and stuff like that. It, it's just unbelievable. You ask these people for a reason that they're voting for who they're voting for. They don't, they don't, it, you figure they'd have some kind of pride to say something, pull something out of your ass. And like this is such a common thread. I couldn't find people. one with a brain. Like if you uh, watch any other streaming, you know, uh, podcasters or whatever, who are conservatives and conservative news and stuff like that, and you watch them do the same things on a much bigger level sometimes. And they go out into these big protests or, you know, at the DNC recently and walk around and they do the same thing and ask people like what, yeah. you know, what policy or, or, you know, what thing do you support that your party is doing? What is your reasoning for voting for And that? it's a big nothing burger at best. It's There's, like, yeah, uh, our party is like, compassionate. Uh, I heard that once. <laughs> why are you voting for Kamala Harris? Uh, because she's a woman. That was the one thing that I heard That's from, honest. from women multiple times that made me want to, and, or, uh, because Trump sucks ass. It was always Stuff something like that. about yeah. Trump. It's like, what? Nobody said anything about Trump. We're asking you about your person. Oh, I got to say the one person that I had the most conversation with <laughs> yeah. who actually had the most intelligent points. And, and this is proof that I'll hear anybody out and I respect their opinion. Me and this guy couldn't be further apart in what we believe, period. And he was a depopulation guy. Yeah. He's there with his big, like, pro-abortion, pro-choice thing or whatever. I don't even remember what it says, but you'll see it in the video, I think. Um, decrease the population. Yeah, something, something like decrease the population or whatever. So he's with the lefties. So I start talking to him, and all of a sudden, stuff he's saying is calling out the lefties and i'm like this is getting kind of weird and i'm thinking the guy's a little crazy he doesn't realize that it's not jiving with his people you know what i'm saying like he doesn't realize how how 
how messed up he is, kind of, you know, he doesn't know where he's at or whatever. Come to find out, the guy is really intelligent, and that is his cause, is depopulation. There's some depopulation candidates out there. He knows everything about them. Um, this is really, truly what he believes in. And I had the most meaningful conversation with him there was. Like, he was the one who could pinpoint exactly when they uh, stole the election from Bernie Sanders. Mm -hmm. Like, and he was, uh, oh, my God, the lefties are pissed because this guy was with them the whole time. And just because he's holding that sign, they thought that he was one of them. But he he's calling it out left and right, yeah, literally. And and he's just all about depopulation. Like he was like, man, at 17 years or 15 years old, I knew I wanted a vasectomy. There's too many people. There's not enough resources. We need to get rid of as many people as we can possibly do. You know, and like he's literally he's, very serious he, he's the only guy I've heard who's honest about why he's all about abortion. Yeah. It's because he wants people gone. Yeah. Before they start, <laughs> I mean, it's, he doesn't want to bring more mouths to feed. And I'm going to tell you guys, he had statistics that would have convinced probably a good thirty percent of you. He he had like you know all, he made valid points. He did. Yeah. He made valid points. Uh, you know, obviously, I know that most of what he was saying was incorrect. Like if you're viewing the world in a truly accurate way, but. What I mean is that he's throwing theory out there. He, he's throwing um, precedents out there. Like, he had something to say. Yeah. Like, yeah. he had something I, to support. I get it. You know, and... It's uh, like Soylent Green, if you've ever seen that movie. So yeah, green, yeah, yeah. And, and the, the, the best part was uh, he was talking about Philadelphia, I think it was, where the, um, the gays for Palestine clashed with the uh, actual like Muslims or Palestinians yeah. or something like <laughs> they had a clash within their own thing, like what's happening at the DNC. Yeah, like, and yeah, that, was, that was when the people behind me that thought he was one of them were like, "Oh my God, you should have seen the looks on their faces!" Like, how, how is he bringing that up? Why, why is he going to bring that up? Then he brought up the Bernie thing and everything. So like, it was interesting to see a guy there who had an issue one issue that he was that passionate about and he goes place to place to place to place like pushing this you know and the guy made more sense than any democrat i met there yeah so that's pretty sad right you know you've got that's the only guy that you could have a sense of is a depopulation guy is just a guy who believes that nobody should ever be brought into the world and that you know we should just like start calling and just get rid yeah, of yeah that's exactly it and he <laughs> used that word too there was a lot of hate, just straight up hatred towards Trump, but there was no passion. You know what I mean? Is there was no passion, no actual care behind anything they were saying. It was just like they were truly just brainwashed bots out there. They that were very hateful. Making too. screechy sounds and stuff. Like, like yeah, they're very hateful. Like, <laughs> like honestly. all of the people that were like our people that were around, you know, like we said, they were really good with the kids. Everybody like, you know, would come up and give them stickers or high fives or like, you know, that one guy was walking around like with the Trump mask on and stuff and they were playing music and oh, stuff. Oh yeah, I'll put a picture of He was of taking that pictures of people and like, you know, he took a picture with Micah, and, like, everyone was really cool with the kids. The A couple of the protesters, um, if you even want to call them that, wait, wait, uh, it's, that's a sophisticated word. Uh, they were, when they were yelling, like, behind that little fence area thing, like, when you were over talking to the other people, uh they, the kids were a little scared. Like, Micah was like, you know, are, are you, we good? Like, you know, like, yeah, we're good. What do you mean? <laughs> like, they they scared him a little bit. Because um, it was just a lot of just pointless yelling, like, hatred and well, stuff. Well, and, you know, Micah's 10 years old, so obviously he knows that there was just recently an assassination attempt. Well, yeah, that too. So, yeah. like, he was, you know, like, a little nervous about yeah, that. Yeah, he had asked me before the event, like, do we have to worry about somebody shooting at the president? Yeah. And I was just happy he called him the president. Yeah. And I said, no, no, yeah, it's just, we should be good. they're going to be on their job this time, Yeah, you know. But yeah, the, the the only issue that anybody had out there, meaning like the issues that mattered to them, was the abortion issue. Yeah. But even then, 
when you spoke to them and you were like, listen, it was tur- turned over to the states. And I, I would just reason with them. I'd say, OK, well, let's say you had this crazy tyrannical president who just like absolutely hated the idea of them. And he was able to write something into an executive order to make sure you can't get one nationwide. They're like, yeah, that's exactly what we're afraid of. I'm like, okay, well, let's say, let's say Trump's that guy. And I said, so do you want him to have that power or do you at least want there to be 50 chances out there of you to be able to get it done? Like 50 options, 50 states. And they never had a real answer to that. And I mean, you know, they could have brought up Supreme Court stuff. They could have said all kinds of things. Like, I feel like I could have made their arguments for them. Yeah. But they didn't have arguments. And that's what I mean. They, they had no passion, but they had a lot of anger and hate, which you think the two go hand in hand, but they don't. It was just like misdirected anger. I actually told a few of these people, I pray for them, you know, and I didn't say it in that disrespectful way either. I was just like at a loss for words, like, what's going to help these people? Like, why are they so lost? Like, I couldn't understand it. And like, we were just talking about when it, when it cut out. If either of us went to uh, a rally of the opposition, we would come armed with something positive about our candidate. Yeah. Here's what it'd be like under our person. Or you, you, if it was Harris, you would have like a list of things like, even though we know all the stuff behind it, we could we could talk about it. She has a law degree. We could talk about how she's a prosecuting attorney. This person, in your eyes, is qualified for president. Like, I don't know, something. And they would just babble on about, you know, 37 counts, felon, okay, but like policy mm-hmm. and this or that. Right. Vance is weird. I heard that once or twice. Yeah, like, they were your weird Okay, songs. yeah. Like, they didn't see Tim Walls yet. what the person <laughs> looked like who was holding the your weird sign. Oh, yeah. You'd be like, wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's always like that, ain't it? Like, and, and so like getting to Trump real quick, of course, we saw the rally. Like we had to watch the, the you watched the live video, but I watched mm-hmm. it mostly later. Um, I stood as close to the building as I possibly could. And this is prior to uh, RFK, um, yeah, uh, you know, getting and behind him. Tulsi and, Gabbard, yeah, lady. and I mean, Tulsi, you could tell something was going to happen there. I had been, I had been asking. We were talking about this earlier for like, God, almost the the entire past four years for those two to kind of switch sides mm-hmm. for certain issues. And I said, this would be absolutely perfect. Like not just perfect for, Oh, we win, but like perfect for the country. Oh, like we're the Avengers, baby. Right. And it's happened. And, um, but this is before then. So like one of the things I had jotted down here that, that was a question that anybody would ask is how was Trump as far as his delivery, what he was saying is overall meaning of everything but also is he able to reach new people with his message those people that are in the middle or those people who um maybe are on the left a little bit but they're a little tired of the bs like do you think that prior to these new revelations these people joining our side do you think he was reaching anybody new with what he was saying that day i think he could have yeah because i mean he talks to people like human beings he just goes up there and does the, the damn thing you know um and he the whole tic tac thing that went viral pretty quick yeah that was little from that. Yeah. things like that you know are so simple but they're memorable and they stick with you you know so like you pull out a, a thing of tic tacs that's you know this big normal size right you know and then one that was like just given to him and it was like tiny, but you know, and we all know if you look at the freaking prices when you go to pay for anything at a grocery store, like the prices on Tic Tacs and gum and all that crap is insane. I would never in my wildest dreams pay that for something like that. Right. But um, he was like, you know what? I think we're, I'm going to keep that. I'm going to use it as an example of inflation. And he did. He pulled that out and, and used it. And it's like, that's something so simple that could reach anybody like look i'm here to speak about your economy and it's suffering and like are you struggling to buy groceries right like but do you think that most people like hate him so much 
who aren't already on the Trump train like that, no matter what he says, that, that that's sensible. And, you know, the, the those viral moments and stuff, do you, do you think it still can reach a few people here and there? Here and there. Yeah. I think if they're can. struggling enough, maybe. I think it like, can if they're, if they're struggling enough. But you've got the ones that are struggling hardcore and are still so stubborn and just will not admit that they, you know, might have vocalized the wrong uh, party to be they theirs. They don't want to admit they're uh, wrong about they something. They don't want to look stupid, I guess. It's like, it's not a big like deal to admit you're wrong stupid, about something. I voted man. for Obama once. Yes, yeah, so I don't know. I know that someday if this podcast ever blows up, that that piece right there is going to be used against <laughs> yeah. me a million times. But I did. I was young and dumb. And yeah. I, I voted I for too. Obama once. I thought I was a Democrat for a very long time. And you hear that with a lot of us. And listen, people, if you realize you were wrong about something like that, um, nobody thought of you previously as an expert on politics. No. You know, so uh, it's, not a, it's not embarrassing for you to admit you're wrong about it. I thought that his approach has gotten, and I meant specifically since the assassination attempt, Oh yeah, it seemed like he's a little smoother, a little looser, uh, a little quicker with the jokes, but the jokes are like less the sarcastic, you know, mm -hmm. the disrespectful kind, but just jokes, just like personable and uh, carefree, like, you know. Yeah, it, he just gets up there. Which sounds he, backwards, but. He lets it flow, and it's very natural, um, and it's just, it's fun, and it's entertaining, too, you know, like, people have a good time at these. Yeah, yeah. You're not just sitting there listening to a speech of a teleprompter that's, like, completely you know, scripted in every My possible way. My mom was way. four foot ten. And, you and know. she told me to always fight. Yeah, it's like you're not so sitting there listening to <laughs> somebody auditioning for a play. Right, you know, right, like, right. And, and that is what you, like a public speaker, that's like what you think of. You know, it's like somebody yeah. like that, you know, doing this powerful delivery, you know. And, and you get that like, from conservatives, too. Yeah, I mean that but that is Trump just doesn't he doesn't do that anymore. He doesn't. I don't think he ever did really. No, because he's not he's not one of them. No, he came in you know? and like destroyed people like Jeb Bush who were like that. yeah. Now he was just boring, but I mean like as far as being a stereotypical politician and not having the, the personality that you're gonna uh, not being a guy you want to hang out with. You I know don't what I mean? ever walk away from uh, watching him speak. Uh, or, you know, whether it was there, even though I didn't get to actually see him speak in person or watching him on, you know, TV or whatever. I, anytime I watch him speak, I walk away with a smile on my face. I feel good. I have yeah. a good feeling like, okay, you know, this is positive. Like, it's just, this it's, guy wants good things. It's a good feeling. He sounds pretty capable of making them happen. Yeah. He cares about the right things. And he wants to get people behind. And what I did notice is, okay, yeah, of course he, a lot of times he'll he'll rattle on down all the negative things that the other side is doing. Yeah. But I've noticed when he does that now, he does it in this really passive way, like the board is still in us, blah, 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 blah. Then he goes into, you know, three times more uh, time on stage on just positives. Here's what we are going to do. Here's what we can do. Here's mm -hmm. what I did before and I'm going to do again. You know, it's almost like that bad stuff. It's like, you guys already know about this. I don't yeah. need to harp on the negative. Let, let's think about what we can do. And that is a problem solver. Like that, that's a leader, do you know? And, uh, and, and I'm, and since the assassination attempt, I feel like he, and I'm not just saying this, even if I didn't know that that's what happened, it could have been something that happened in his personal life that we didn't see. I've noticed that he's just more, quote unquote, presidential. He is. Like there's something about the way that he's carrying himself. It feels like if he was always talking to 990 of the people in a thousand person room, he's now talking to the full thousand. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, he's going out of his way to help people that are like having a heart attack yeah, in a crowd or whatever happened to that yeah, woman. Or, yeah, you know, he's just on it 
more than ever. He it, walked out of his bulletproof glass. Yeah. That was his first he outdoor did. rally since. And he's just like, I don't need this, you know, and, yeah. and it's not an act. I feel like he's really on it. Like he's laser focused. Like it almost like woke him up. Like he, yeah. he knew what his purpose was. He, he's got a lot of passion behind it. But I think that uh, something ignited something extra in him. Yeah. And I think that maybe in Asheville is the first time that people got to see it. And maybe some moments from that will be shown you know, in the future, after he wins the election, you'll see, like you said, that little Tic Tac moment or a little joke he made about like the chart or whatever the case may yeah. be. It's like he, something has changed. I think it has. I think that the, the little thing where he he mentioned um, he mentioned about God, where mm -hmm. he said, like, you know, he mentioned praying. And I said, I, you know, I know a lot of people uh, aren't that into that nowadays. And he said, but I think that there might be something to it. You might want to think about that. Yeah. Like, I, I think that he feels like, you know, he was spared and that while he's, you know, living the rest of his life, he should do something important with it is what I feel like. Yeah. Like, like he's here for a purpose. With Kennedy, supposedly he told Kennedy that his legacy he wants to leave behind is a legacy of healthy children. Yeah. And I mean, that that's a big thing to ask yourself. You know what I mean? Like, I, I would hope it, um, you know, wouldn't drive you crazy trying to pull something like that off. Just, just get some steps in the right direction. You know, that that that's something that's going to take. We we've destroyed the the public health of Americans over the course of like a century. So it's very it, sad. Or at least sixty plus years. Yeah. So it's really hard to undo that. Um. But yeah, that I I took away a lot of positive from it. I was scared for. I said this on Facebook. I was afraid for. Um, say we don't win this election, um, or, or even if we do, and there's still this contingent of people, a large contingent of people that are just like really stubborn and hateful or whatever, and no matter what good he does, there'll always be something bad in it. Um, I'm scared because it's, it's a really ignorant society, actually stupid because it's Very, purposefully ignorant. Yeah. Like it's, they don't know anything. They don't know anything regarding history. They don't know anything um, regarding their own candidates. You know, they, they don't know how the voting process works, like locally as opposed to the, the, the presidential race. Like they don't know anything. They don't really have particular um, stances. And if they do have a particular stance, it's abortion, that's it. well, yeah, it, it is usually just abortion. And then they don't have a mind from what I've encountered that can give you, uh, you know, an idea, a hypothesis on how can we solve this? All right. You know, I sit here and do this with myself all day, every day. Like I probably drive you nuts with it where I'm like, there's this problem. Here's how you could fix it. And it's like, and I'll say, I'll work it out out loud. And it's like, okay, it's something that matters to me, at least in that moment. So, yeah, I use my mind that God gave me to, to, to use for something. And, you know, I, I may as well use it for something important, you know, instead of like vegging out, playing video games or something. Maybe I can think of a good idea that I pass on to somebody. But anyways, I feel like there's no real... Uh, I don't know. There's substance. The, no, there's no real substance. And um, people just, I don't know if maybe they just feel like it's just that they're nihilistic. None of it matters. There's a lot of people like that. And, you know, most of them right now are just stubborn, follow the flock. Uh, that's what they're doing. You know, birds of a feather and they are flocking together. And that is just. That's just what they're doing. But isn't that crazy though? Because they're going like, we're miserable with what we're doing in life right now. Yeah, but we're going to so masquerade continue. like we are the joy and hope movement, right? Like, our See, they're not even masquerading. They're just using a word. It's like, okay, yeah, you can use <laughs> all these adjectives and feelings and all these whatever. And, you know, all these pretty words and whatever. I it just... You don't actually see any joy. Like, and, and they no don't joy. pretend that there's you joy. Guys, like, it's I just mean, the word. Okay, the RNC, was there um, anybody outside screaming and burning flags and, you know, going nuts at their own party? 
um and trying against to each break other break like, in yeah. yeah like was there a bunch of huge protesters that were infighting like at the rnc no nothing like that nothing like that the it dnc is wild. was a freaking zoo a what's zoo funny is there were no conservatives there protesting or making noise or there, anything. no if there were the conservatives that were there were walking through there just in their gear if they had any just to represent like hey that i'm not with y'all right, <laughs> i'm right. not with her but that was it they weren't insulting anyone or anything they like literally that, tore saw. down their own wall you know That's they insane. built that wall to keep people out they, See, they should have trump build that wall <laughs> <laughs> it's it's nuts and and but they didn't believe in walls they have to have yeah, walls around their no. own event like i mean there were people that were naked i mean walking through there when vivek walked through there and was just asking them normal questions just exactly like you did you know and he's very patient and well-spoken and all that stuff i try to be patient like him and not quite he's, he's a really master at it, at it. <laughs> yeah i mean 